Hey, what's up, Kyle Russ here. Today we're gonna to be covering, doing a little deep dive on the oxygen pathway. How to get oxygen out of the atmosphere, into your body and use it so you can surf better and be more confident in the water. And the reason for this is the question I've been getting a lot, probably the second most asked question I get or common people make is saying they get, when the swell is big, they get tired super fast or they panic when they get held under, things like that. All things related with bigger surf and lower confidence. And that all has to do with the breath. So the way I describe the breath pathway is there's three steps. First is uh, intake, so that is getting the atmosphere into your lungs. The atmosphere is comprised of about 21% oxygen, and the rest is uh, nitrogen, a bit of helium, and blah, blah, blah. So you wanna get the oxygen out and then through, absorb it through our lungs. So to get, take a full, deep breath, you gotta have a greater um, lung capacity. There's lots of different ways to do that. Breath holding is actually one of the best ways. It strengthens your lungs, it stretches your lungs, and when you hold your breath and you absorb all that CO2, it stretches, it. that helps a lot, but as well, it, it changes the wall of your lungs too. So without being super complicated, it just allows you to absorb the oxygen out of the atmosphere better and get it into your blood. So that's super important. And so that's lung capacity, but the diaphragm, that pump, that's what's getting all the atmosphere and that's what's sucking in, it's creating that negative pressure in your lungs when it inflates. So you gotta have a strong diaphragm. And just a little side note on diaphragm breathing, according to the Czech Performance Institute in, um, uh, they're in Santa Clara, California, and they have the greatest health and wellness coach of all time. His name is Paul Check, and he rehabs thousands of these, and thousands. Uh, uh, he rehabs inverted breathing, and he, according to him, the majority. He, sometimes he says upward of eighty to ninety percent of his clients have this, and even top professional athletes, like the best of the best in the world, like basketball players, football players, even surfers. This guy coached Laird Hamilton. Now I'm not saying Laird Hamilton had inverted breathing. I assume that he doesn't, but I don't know. But anyways, so the majority of people have this, and it's when you take. When you chest breathe, so if you if I tell you to take a deep breath right now and you go and you get taller and puff up your chest, you're not taking a full breath. So your breath should be two thirds in through your belly. So the first two thirds of your inhale in your belly, and then the last one third of your inhale, you should puff your chest a little bit. And so your your body actually has three different planes that it expands on. So it's front to so it's your front comes out and your back should come out too. So if you put your thumbs on your back like that, they should spread apart when you take an inhale. And as well, then the second one is the chest, and that's the last one. So there's the three planes you're supposed to expand on. The most important ones are down around your belly. So that's a part of getting the atmosphere into your lungs, having a strong diaphragm. So if you have inverted breathing, if you've never heard of it, good chance you have it. I had it when I first heard about it. It was it's, so according to the Czech Institute again. It takes 3,500 to 5,000 conscious repetitions in order to fix that. So what's a conscious repetition? That's making, like consciously thinking about your breathing. So that's a hard thing to do. So the best way to rehab that is to connect it with your exercises. So one thing that this Paul Check guy teaches, he will tie a string around uh, your waist so that you can like feel your belly pushing out to it while you're breathing. Which is good. I, that's not what I did though. What I did is when I was doing the paddle strength training, I would really focus on the movement. So inhale, exhale as I'm paddling, and then it would my belly would be going in and out. And so I was able to rehab that pretty quick. And I, but at first, the first couple times, it was like, man, this is a really trippy, weird thing. So that's part one. That's intake, getting the atmosphere into your lungs, having a stronger diaphragm, and having um, added lung capacity. Number two, distribution. So you got lungs, or so you got blood oxygen in your blood you got to get that blood all through into your brain into your organs and into your muscles and pump it through so your heart has to be strong so there's another there's another part of this you got to have a strong heart that's cardiovascular strength and endurance so you got your heart to pump really really fast and so you want to be able to actually lower your heart rate because a really high heart rate um can exhaust you really quickly and, and that even costs oxygen so you want to have a low resting heart rate and you do that by doing cardio workouts breath holding again so I'll say right now, the breath holding covers about everything. So you do want to do breath holding because it covers the strength of your heart as well. But another thing, so what I teach mostly is breath adaptation. So adapting to low levels of oxygen, that kind of training. Because when you, your body has low levels of oxygen, your body produce, produces more red blood cells. So you have actually get more blood into your body. So your oxygen carrying capacity is increased. So you have more oxygen in your blood and you're pumping it faster with a stronger heart. So if you think about people who hike like Mount Everest and stuff, they go slow, right? So they have stages. They got base one, base two, base three, whatever it may be. And they sit at each base for a certain amount of time so your body can uh, get used to that 
low levels of oxygen and what's actually happening is their bodies are producing more red blood cells so they have more oxygen carrying capacity so that's high elevation training um you know lots of trainers and fighters and stuff they train at elevation and that's also they build more red blood cells but you don't have to be on a mountain to do that all you gotta do is do low oxygen training like i teach it's all to do with breath holding uh restricting oxygen while you train so that's part number two, the distribution. And this, the third one, this is the most important, this is um, absorption. And this is something that isn't really talked about a lot. It has to do with CO2 tolerance. So when you burn oxygen, it, it turns into CO2 and that starts to fill your blood. And your body, so when you have that urge to breathe and hold your breath, that's that urge to exhale because your body wants to get rid of that CO2 because you, your body doesn't tolerate it. But when you have a high tolerance to it, you can hold your breath longer, but as well, here's a super crazy point. There's something called the Bohr effect, spelled B-O-H-R, and it's named after a Danish physiologist who discovered this, that in order for oxygen to get out of your blood and into your muscle, it needs to be in the presence of CO2 because CO2 um, dilates your uh, blood vessels. So if your the oxygen can't get into your muscles unless they're dilated and your the muscles don't dilate unless there's CO2. So if you have a low tolerance and you're constantly <sighs> having to blow out and flush in your lungs, you don't have as much CO2, so you're not absorbing all that oxygen. So even though you got it into your lungs, you have a strong diaphragm, even though you have a strong heart and you're pumping through your blood, if it's not getting into your muscles, it doesn't matter. So that is the oxygen pathway. You have to have all three. If you're missing any one of those steps, the entire system fails. It's a, that's what it is, it is a system. You have to have strength in every area. And that's exactly why I teach um, breath adaptation, doing that low oxygen training because it covers everything. It's gonna strengthen your intake system, it's gonna strengthen your delivery system, and it's gonna allow you to have those high tolerances so you can absorb as much as possible. Because when you're in the ocean, you are, aren't gonna decide when you hold your breath, you're not gonna be able to decide how long you hold your breath, and then you also gotta recover while you're paddling, while the next wave is on the way. So you got to use every single oxygen molecule you have available to you. You have to use it to the fullest, fullest deep breaths, full distribution, full absorption, and quick recovery, and a strong mind. That's all what breath training is. I don't want this to sound like a pitch, but I do have a course where I really cover all of this stuff. Now, if you want to just dip your toe in, go back to my other YouTube videos. I got tons of free videos of all how you do this um, low oxygen training, breath adaptation, all that kind of stuff. But if you want to accelerate the process, if you want to work a little closer with me, it would be my honor to serve you and help you get to that, get you to where you want to be as a surfer a lot quicker and optimize your oxygen pathway so you can surf better, have more confidence and perform better in the ocean and have more fun. That's what it's all about. My name's Kyle Russ. This is Hydro Mind with the Oxygen Pathway. Thanks for watching.